Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Oracle Park, recently AT&T Park, just renamed, it's a beautiful day. Um, home of San Francisco Giants, they're on the road. We're here at a pretty interesting event. It's called Sports Tech Tokyo World Demo Day. Uh, brought together a, a, a coalition of about 100 startups, 25 of them are giving demos today on technology as it relates to sports, but even more importantly, that can then be used in other, in other areas beyond sports. We're excited to have an athlete on, uh, not just another tech crazy guy. He's <laughs> Brendan Harris, he's an athlete in residence at 76 Capital. Brendan, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. So what is, the, I've heard principals and, and entrepreneur in residence, what does the athlete in residence do? It is essentially a play on the entrepreneur in residence. Uh, I was introduced to 76 Capital. Uh, I finished playing in 15 and I was doing my MBA at Wharton and uh, in, in Philly and got introduced to uh, Wayne and the guys at 76 and they are kind of putting together uh, an athlete venture group where they're they're bringing in uh, a lot of athletes that want to be investors and kind of providing them access to deal flow and um, and then also leveraging their social capital so uh, he was he was kind of tickled when he came when he coined the term athlete in residence and he threw it on my business card and, and that's where we're at right <laughs> so I'm just curious your perspective as an athlete as you look around at all the technology that's going into sports right kind of the big categories are you know that which helps the players play better there's mm -hmm. that which helps the people run the teams better and then there's that which is really kind of part of the the fan experience I mean you actually had to go down and try to put wood on a ball coming at you 90 plus miles an hour. All this other stuff, do you see it as, is it, is it interesting, is it a distraction, is it entertaining? I mean, how do you look at it from an athlete's perspective? So yeah, so a lot to unpack. So first of all, I, I have this uh, uh, equally the equal view of uh, fascination and frustration, where a lot of this wasn't here, wasn't around uh, when I when I was playing, and certainly from the field. Now we're taking in things like recovery and rest and sleep. Uh, but I think players and, and me personally are fascinated with how can we improve on field performance. And I think baseball is such an imperfect game, and you fail so often. Being able to turn to turn things that were previously subjective and apply data in, in, in tech to make them objective and give you answers. I think is fascinating, um, and to be able, the ways that we can use data to to kind of promote performance and health and, and all those things are, are very fascinating. So from a player's point of view, we're all about it. But at the same time, I think um, and certainly this is why I've I've loved to get into sports tech is there's a lot of data that's just noise that's coming in and things. And so the the tough part is. Um, kind of weeding through and what is actionable info and what can actually help and improve the on-field performance. And then uh, along with that, you know, we want to field the, the product on the field, but also what the services for the consumer and the fans are and how can we improve that and then engage them because certainly um, sports are, are part of the culture and part of life now and, and it's fascinating. These fans want to know more and more and more, uh, certainly what's going on and, and it's been a, it's been a you know, great journey. Right, so on the fan experience specifically, and we've been, we've been here a number of years, Bill Stiles, a good friend of mine, obviously, Yep. Another Wharton, uh, another Wharton yep. grad, and and you know talking about high density Wi-Fi and you know the app on your phone and delivered uh, you know food delivered to your seats. I mean, as a as a athlete on the field, do you look at kind of all these things as as a distraction? Do you appreciate it's kind of a more competitive environment these days in terms of people's attention and, and kind of that entertainment dollar? But I would imagine from between the lines, it looks like you know hey hey you know the game's down here, people. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's been interesting because um you know, one of the problems in what Major League Baseball has been trying to address is pace of games, right? And if you really look at the data, they're not that much longer. What's different? We're wired differently, right? So our attention spans are shorter and we're constantly addicted to our technology. So these, um, you know, guys like Bill are, are, are trying to leverage that and try to have your food delivered and try to increase the social component, increase the value in, um, in the in-venue experience uh, so that you're not only watching the game, but you're socially enjoying it at the same time and kind of fill in those gaps. A lot of it is, yes, uh, and I think, um, um, there's been balls flying into the stands since baseball's been playing, but the need to put the netting up has come a lot of times because nobody's watching. Some people aren't, not nobody, but a lot of people aren't watching the games or are getting hit with a lot of these foul balls. So there is that component where, you know, there's, there's some unbelievable things that are going off, you know, on, on, on the sides, but, um, you know, it's baseball is still going to be, you know, kind of very similar within, within the confines right. of the lines. The other piece of it I find really interesting on the data side, right, is there's so much data, right? There's, there's data, data, data. Obviously baseball is built on data and yeah. arguments about data and conversations about data. Mm 
But now it's kind of gone to this next gen with, you know, wins over replacement and all these other things. But sometimes it's funny to me. It feels like they're forgetting the object of the game is to win the game. Mm -hmm. And it feels like sometimes the metadata has now become more important than the data. Did you win or lose? And mm -hmm. it's not necessarily being used as a predictor for future performance, but it's almost like a standalone game in and of itself. Like we forget the object is to win the game and win a championship, not to have the highest war number. Do you sense that frustration? Does that sound sound like? Yeah, I think what you're getting into a lot of times is, are, you know, how are we making decisions, right? And and in the game, a lot of the times people forget that human beings are out there performing, and so I think that's how we've gotten into Moneyball 2.0 and looking at development and certainly mental health and in 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 uh, focus and game preparation have come into play more. And you're seeing some managers. I mean. Mickey Callaway just came out and said 80% of my, you know, decisions go against the data, which which I thought was a little bit interesting. But uh, so there there is that fine line, right, where you have to filter in what's noise and what's actionable, and at the same time, um, you know, allow you, you know your managers and your decision makers some flexibility to go with you know they're there in the heat of the battle and they kind of know their guys and they know the human element uh, that's involved. So it's a, it's an interesting um, you know trying to balancing act. Right. So from your from your new job and your new role, what are some of the things you hope to see today? What are some of the things that you're excited about? Um, you know, from kind of an investor and, and, and having played the game as well as, you know, kind of looking forward to the evolution of sports. Mm -hmm. Two things, uh, specifically how the, uh, I'm certainly biased to, to the performance on the field and the human element, and certainly everybody wants workout secrets. And I don't feel like it's, whether it's athletes or the kind of weekend warrior or, or people that are, you know, kind of your senior citizens. And I don't think it's as simple as this has worked and you should do this. It's a very personalized um, experience now. And I think some of this personalized digital fitness is fascinating to me. Um, and then how it relates to and how your body relates to, you know, your diet, your nutrition, your sleep, your recovery. I think all those are fascinating um, that uh, uh, advances that I want to look into more. And then second is, is uh, as I kind of mentioned, is the fan engagement aspect. And how do we drive those those fans, that digital um, and make it actionable and monetize, right? So that, you know, you, you have your fans that are following, you know, your, your Facebook, your Twitter, and all those things. And so how do you n not only engage them, but collect that data and then kind of personalize that experience, engage your fan in a way um, that can kind of grow your brand? It's, yeah. It's, it'll be interesting to me. Really interesting to have to have your perspective. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a, a great day and you'll see all kinds of crazy stuff. So thanks for, uh, for taking a few minutes. Yeah, anytime. Thanks <laughs> oh, for having me. All right. He's Brendan. I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We are at Oracle Park in San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.